Okay, this is our Thompson Boring Bar. It's um, a relatively old machine, but albeit very accurate. Um, these machines are not really made anymore, especially not in this quality of a machine. Um, a lot of the machines for cutting engines from remanufacturing shops now most likely are sourced from the Middle East. Um, this is some of the cutting equipment, the tooling for the machine. We have the carbide tips, and we also have a diamond tip, polycrystallite. And it's in the micrometer right now. We're going to take another cut and let everybody see how we do this. We're going to remove five thousandths of an inch from the cylinder bore to true it all back up again. This is done by loosening the toggle. There's a spring inside. It's a direct adjustment piece this is. So bring it around to ten and five. Lock the tool. Slightly check it. Yes, it's got that. Then we place the tip into the boring bar itself, into the boring machine. Shove it in, make sure it's snug. Rotate it slightly so we can get the tooling in. Simple Allen key to lock it in place. Then we engage the clutch and the back gear. For driving the machine and then we're just about to take a cut now and um, we'll try and follow this down the boards a little bit dark we can see it here but we've got a little torch to help the camera out so here we go a bit noisy <laughs> The bar progresses at a set speed um, down the cylinder bar so it cuts all of the, the cylinder walls um, to a pretty nice finish. A light on afterwards is adequate as you can see the bar is catching all sides of the cylinder and it's going to progress down nice and evenly. That smoke that you see is actually the carbon coming out of the steel. This is an oilless cut and because the cylinder bars are already impregnated with oil from running, this obviously being a second-handed engine, an engine that we're working at the moment. This is a Mitsubishi L200 um, Warrior or animal pickup. Um, the people are very busy these engines because they've been failing pretty regular from new. Uh, we re remanufactured them to a good standard and um, they last the customer a good long time. I'll blow a bit of smoke out the way. This machine has six different speeds. We like to take it nice and evenly calm, a nice smooth cut. And as I say, when the cylinders are cut, uh, the honing process only takes a small while. We maybe take another two, two to three thousandths out with the honing stones um, to get the correct fit and the running clearance for the pistons. Down nicely, as always. Good old machines, they kept. Yeah. Truly sharp. about maybe an inch and a half away from the bottom of the bar. When the uh, cutting tool reaches the bottom of the bar, um, the machine senses it and it will um, put itself off into neutral. At that point we disengage the motor and we turn the bar back up to another cut if needed.
So at this point, we we'll switch off the power for a small while, and then we come up to the top, and we re-engage the clutch. This also, at the same time as engaging the clutch, removes the cutting tool away from the bar, so you don't get that nasty cut strike that comes up. Um, knock it out of back gear, and then the bar returns. By manual, lock it into gear, let it return on its own speed. Let's have a look at the sun that can use shine there. Camera in, yeah, very nice finish, even all the way down. Um, pretty, pretty happy with that, as always. This machine achieves a nice finish, um, cuts the workload down for us a hell of a lot. Much nicer machine than these small um, Van Normans that are block mounted. This machine actually anchors the block down within the ways of its um, of the body, the chassis of the machine, and then we have a cam system that locks it down on either side here. This is the secondary lockdown, so that the block has no chance of moving whatsoever, and it cuts a very accurate path down the cylinder bars.